Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I care about nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now. You hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, you guys, let's jump into the video. Hi, everybody! Kumusta kayo? Isang panibagong araw nga ng discussion ng alay ko sa inyo for today. Ngayon, kung di mo na pa napapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapap
Time is up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good. The answer is letter B. Altered level of consciousness. So, meron ka bang DLOC dyan? Yes. Okay. Altered level of consciousness nga po ang tamang sagot. Changes in behavior and level of consciousness are the first sins of or signs of hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy is caused by liver failure and develops when the liver is unable to convert protein metabolic product what we called ammonia to urea. Kaya mataas ang ammonia ng pasyente yung nagbibiyo and kaya may DLOC. This results in accumulation of ammonia and other toxic in the blood that damages the brain cells. Malino ba tayo doon? Malinaw. Eto na tayo. Board exams have a question number two. When Mr. Gonzalez regained consciousness, the physician ordered 50 ml of lactose per RM every two hours. Mrs. or Mr. Gonzalez develops diarrhea. The nurse best action would be, itong tanong, anong nurse best action mo kapag nag-develop ng diarrhea ang pasyente mo after mong bigyan ng lactulose? That's the question. Is it A? A. I'll see if your physician is in the hospital. B. Maybe you're reacting to the drug. I will withhold the next dose. C. I'll lower the dosage as ordered so the drug causes only two to four stools a day. Or D. Frequently bowel movements are needed to reduce sodium level. Sodium, gigigilak sa'yo. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good letter. C. I lowered the dose as uh, the dosage as ordered, so the drug causes only two to four stools a day. Lactose is given. Lactulose is given to to a patients with hepatic encephalopathy to reduce absorption of ammonia in the intestines by binding with ammonia and promoting more frequent bowel movements. Tandaan mo, ang pasyente mo si Mr. Gonzalez pa to related sa question number one. Sa lahat ng mga hepatic failure, liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, lahat ng mga maganyan, lagi yung merong ano? Meron silang targeted bowel movement per day. At buhay nila ang mga lactulose enema. Kaya ang mga nurses, kailangan mo siyang patahihin whether you like it or not. Kahit na mag ka dyan. Okay? Kasi buhay nila to. And then, if the patient is, um, is experiencing diarrhea, it indicates overdosage and the nurse must reduce the amount of medication given to the patient. The stool will be mashy or soft. Lactulose is also very sweet and may cause cramming and bloating. May dalawang route na kadalasan binibigay ito ng doktor, either orally, uh, either or, uh, pwedeng both na oral and rectal. I ano mo siya, inject mo siya sa anus. Okay? So, the answer is letter C. Malino yon, malina. Next question, number three. Which of the following groups of symptoms indicates a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm? Symptoms, itong tanong, symptomas ng ruptured ab, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Aneurysm. A. Lower back pain, increased blood pressure, decreased red blood cell or RBC count, increased white blood cell or WBC count. B. Severe lower back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBC count, increased WBC count. C. Severe lower back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBC count, decreased RBC count. But dalawa yung RBC? RBC count and decreased WBC count. D. Intermittent. Gusto mo yung intermittent. Sorry. Intermittent lower back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBC count, increased WBC count. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. The answer is letter B. Severe lower back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBC count, increased WBC count. Malino ba yun? Malino. Here's the rationalization. Siyempre, hindi ko na makita pa ba yan na wala kang rationalization. Okay? Severe lower back pain indicates an aneurysm rupture. Secondary to pressure being applied uh, within the abdominal cavity. When rupture occurs, the pain is constant because it can't be alleviated until the aneurysm is repaired. Blood pressure decreases due to the loss of blood. 
after the aneurysm ruptures, the vasculature in the um, is interrupted and blood volume is lost. So blood pressure wouldn't increase. For the same reason, the RBC count is decreased, not increased. The WBC count increases as cell migrate to the site of injury. Hence the answer is letter B. All right, magproceed na tayo. Next question, number four. After undergoing a cardiac catheterization, uh, so post-cat lab itong pasyente mo, Tracy has a large puddle of blood under his buttocks. Which of the following steps should the nurse take first? Initial action mo. Lahat ito, pag makakita ka ng mga ganitong tanong sa board exam, all of these are correct, but which is the first thing that you'll do? Sa pasyente mong anong case, post-cardiac catheterization, merong a puddle of blood under his buttocks. What will you do first? Is it A, call for help? Help! Like that. B, obtain vital signs. C, ask the client to lift up. Or D, apply gloves and assess the groin site. Your five seconds starts now. Okay, what is the answer? Very good letter D. Mga first, first, assess, assess. You know, mga clue. Pero hindi lahat, ha? not all the time. Letter D. Okay, D is the right answer. Apply gloves and assess the groin site. Bakit nga ba? Observing standard precaution is the first priority when dealing with any blood fluid. Assessment of the groin is uh, groin side is the second priority. This establishes where the blood is coming from and determines how much blood has been lost. The goal is in, in this situation is to stop the bleeding. The nurse would call for help if it were warranted after the assessment of the situation. After determining the extent of the bleeding, vital signs assessment is important. The nurse should never move the client in case of clot. Ha in case a clot has formed, moving can disturb the clot and can promote further bleeding. Okay, hence the answer is letter D. Next, nakakalahati na tayo. Question number five na. How are you guys doing? Hingihing yung malalim. Eto na tayo. Question number five. Which of the following treatment is suitable surgical intervention for client with unstable angina? Nako, ACLS. Hmm, meron akong lecture niyan. Panoorin mo. Ano daw ang suitable surgical intervention? Not pharmacological intervention has surgical intervention for client with unstable angina. Is it A, cardiac catheterization? Is it B, echocardiogram? Is it C, nitroglycerin? Kasi sabi ko lang, deeper cutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty, PTCA. Your five seconds starts now. Hindi ko alam pero parang na ano ko. Time's up. Na elisis ako sa black pink in your area. Baby, it's a ma, it's a ma. Chiring. Ayan na tayo. Ayan na tayo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What is the answer to this one? Letter D. Very good. Sa lahat ng sumagot na PTCA, mabuhay kayo. Ito na. Why is this the right answer? Listen up, nurses. PTCA can alleviate the blockage and restore blood flow and oxygenation. An echocardiogram is a non-invasive diagnos uh, diagnosis test or diagnostic test. Nitroglycerin is an oral sublingual medication which make it your pharmacological intervention. Kikinig ka sa mga clue. Cardiac catheterization is a diagnostic tool, not a treatment. Tukang bobo ka dyan. Okay? Okay. Bago tayo mag-proceed sa question number six, I'm gonna give you time to subscribe. Go! Oh, di ba? Bilis lang. Hindi ka talaga pinagpawisan. Click mo na yung subscribe button. Nakakahiya naman ako sa'yo. Kakahiya naman ako sa'yo. <laughs> All right, question number six. Here we go. The nurse is aware that the following terms used to describe reduced cardiac output and perfusion impairment due to ineffective pumping of the heart is. Meaning, ano daw ang disorder or medical disorder ang di description lang to. Medical description. Basically. Tinatanong ka, 
This is used to describe reduced cardiac output and perfusion impairment due to ineffective pumping of the heart. Is it A, anaphylactic shock, B, cardiogenic shock, is it C, distributive shock, or D, myocardial infarction? Sasapakin kita. Actually, meron akong lecture material nito sa MS. Meron akong parang uh, anafi nito. Cardiogenic shock kasama yung nursing interventions. But anyways, I'm gonna give you five seconds to think about it and write your answers on your piece of paper. And it starts right now. Time is up. What is your answer? Very good. Cardiogenic shock. Heart. Cardio. Cardiogenic shock is a shock related to ineffective pumping of the heart. Anaphylactic shock results from allergic reaction. Automatic, hindi yon. Distributive shock results from changes in the intravascular volume distributions and is usually associated with increased cardiac output. MI is in a shock state, though a severe MI can lead to shock. All right? Malina ba yun? Malina. Ito na tayo, medyo natutuyo yung lalamunan ko. Kuha lang ang kape. Pwede. Ah, oh, okay na. Balik na ako. Maglit lang naman. Okay na tayo. Very good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I have to grab my coffee. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Question number seven. Seven. A client with hypertension asked the nurse which factors can cause blood pressure to drop to normal levels. Meaning, ano daw mga factors na nagdi-decrease ng blood pressure? That's the question. Is it A, kidneys excretion to sodium only? Is it B, kidneys retention of sodium and water? Is it C, kidneys excretion of sodium and water? Or D, kidneys retention of sodium and excretion of water? Your five seconds starts now. Basic biochem, whatever sodium goes, water follows. Okay. All right. The answer to this one is letter C. Very good. Kidneys excretion of sodium and water. The kidneys respond to the rise in blood pressure by excreting sodium and excess water. This response ultimately affects uh, seismic blood pressure by regulating blood volume. Sodium or water retention would only further increase blood pressure. Sodium and water travel together across the membrane in the kidneys. One can't travel without the other. Wherever sodium goes, water follows. What did I tell you? Yes. Palino ba tayo sa number seven? Magpusid na tayo. Last three questions na tayo. You guys make this one count. Body some type of question number eight. Nurse Rose is aware that this, the statement that best explains why furosemide Lasix is administered to treat hypertension is meaning indication ng furo. That is the question. Why is it being given? Is it A, it dilates peripheral blood vessels? B, it decreases sympathetic cardio acceleration? C, it inhibits the angiotensine converting enzymes? Or D, it inhibits reabsorption of sodium and water in the loop of Henley? Your five seconds starts now. Alright, what is your answer? Very good naman sa mga Henley dyan. It inhibits reabsorption of sodium and water in the loop of Henley. Furosemide is a loop diuretic that inhibits sodium and water reabsorption in the loop of Henley, thereby causing a decrease in blood pressure. Vasodilators causes dilation of peripheral blood vessels, directly relaxing vascular smooth muscle and decreasing blood pressure. Adrenergic blockers decrease sympathetic cardio acceleration and decrease blood pressures. Angio uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors decrease blood pressure due to their action on angiotensin. Hence, the answer is letter D. Okay, galaw-galaw, pag-pag-pag ng mga las masagidli, eto na tayo sa iyong question number 9. SLE, lupus. 
Nurse Nikki knows that laboratory results supports the diagnosis of systemic lupus erythematosus is. Meaning, ito yung lang tanong. Ano ang confirmatory test ng SLE? Period. Ang huh? pahirapan na sarili. Is it A, elevated serum compl ah, complement, complement level? Is it B, thrombocytosis, elevated sedimentation rate? C, pancytopenia, elevated antinuclear antibody, anatiter? Or D, leukocytosis, elevated blood, urea, nitrogen, BUN, and creatinine levels? Your five seconds starts now. Sakit ito ni Selena. Lina Gomez. Okay, eto na tayo sa letter C. Pancytopenia, elevated antinuclear antibody, anatiter. Remember na yung systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, is an autoimmune disorder. Laboratory findings for clients with SLE usually shows pancytopenia, elevated anatiter, and decreased serum complement levels. Clients may have elevated BUN and creatinine levels from nephritis, but the increase does not indicate SLE. Very specific kasi ang antibiotic, uh, ano yun? Antinuclear antibody titer sa pag-rule out ng SLE. Okay? Okay, last question na tayo. Make this one count. Now, this is a very lengthy type of question. So, makinig ng mabuti, okay? Tingnan ng malalim, ere na. Tarayan ko ito. Mm -hmm. Arnold, a 19-year-old client with a mild confusion, is discharged from the emergency department. Before discharge, her complaints of uh, he complains of a headache. When offered acetaminophen, paracetamol, his mother tells the nurse that the headache uh, is severe and she would like her son to have something stronger. Which of the following responses by the nurse is appropriate? Bisabin ayon ng nanay ng teenager na ito na bigyan ng paraseta mo. Gusto niya medyo mas malakas. Adika ma. Okay. Adika mi. Ganyan. Ganyan na sabihin mo sa nanay. Mi adik tayo mi. Charing. Pero ito yung pagpipilian mo. Kunwari nasa ano tayo. Ideal word. World. Okay. So A. Your son had a mild con concussion. Acetaminophen is a strong is strong enough. Ah, di ba? Laks baka therapeutic nursing. B. Aspirin is avoided because of the danger of race syndrome in children or young adults. Tara, di ba? Doktora ka, girl! Is it C. Narcotics are avoided after a head injury because they may uh, they may uh, hide a worsening condition. Uh -huh. Is it D. Stronger medications may lead to vomiting which increases the intracranial pressure ICP. Nagpatophysiology kami. Eto na tayo. Your five seconds starts now. Okay, me. Eto na tayo. Okay, okay, okay. The answer to question number 10 is letter C. The best answer. The best response. Narcotics are avoided after a head injury because they may hide a worsening condition. Narcotics may mask changes in the level of consciousness that indicate increased ICP and shouldn't as uh, shouldn't acetaminophen is strong enough ignores the mother's question and therefore isn't appropriate. Aspirin is contraindicated to conditions or in conditions that may have bleeding such as trauma and for children or young adults with viral illnesses due to the danger of race syndrome. Stronger medications may not necessarily lead to vomiting but will sedate the client thereby masking the changes in his level of consciousness. You want to maintain that LOC intact. Hence, you're just giving paracetamol. Period. Okay? Lalo na kapag merong mild, na may trauma ang pasyente mo. Na-admit dahil sa trauma, car injury, fall, may mga basta involved ng concussion. Okay? Yay! Thank you so much you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something today. Please don't forget to write your scores on the description box. I'd be more than happy to evaluate the scores of my students. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Uh, let me know if you have other nursing topics you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan mo ngayong upload natin this Friday because that's going to... Friday, kung hindi Friday, mga Monday na tayo mag magkikita ulit. <laughs> Okay, basta click with notification bell para lagi ka na ano dyan, na update. Now, let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. 
Um, follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Galve, except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Galve Official. I have a Spotify account, I mean channel, a podcast channel. It's 3 a.m. Conversation with Neil Galve. It's been a while since I actually uploaded, um, uh, you know, a show or a podcast. Um planning to come back. Don't worry, you guys. Okay, alam ko, inaabangan nyo yun. Abangan nyo nga yung upload natin sa mga susunod na araw and uh, tulungan mo na ako, ipamalita mo na sa Radyo Sira, ang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh and pinaka-libre ng Nursing Review Center sa Balatang YouTube. I'll see you again. You have a good one.